since January of 2022, uh, they record 62 countries and territories having reported uh, a detection of African swine fever. 11 of those 62 countries have reported ASF for the first time, and another 11 of those 62 countries have reported that it has spread to new areas. And so I think that that, you know, gets us a good starting point for kind of the global situation of African swine fever. As far as a number of animals impacted since 2022, um, 1,757,000 head reported to the World Organization for Animal Health. So I think we could all agree that this is probably, if anything, an underrepresentation of the actual numbers, uh, recognizing that there are some countries that aren't reporting to WOA, um, but those numbers themselves are, are pretty Im impressive as Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest Swine Health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me on this episode is Anna Forseth. Anna is the Director of Animal Health at the National Pork Producers Council. Anna, thanks so much for coming on to our show. For anybody that hasn't met you, why don't you start with a little introduction for the audience? Yeah, sounds great. Thank you for the invitation to participate on the podcast today. Um, as Clayton mentioned, Anna Forseth, uh, veterinarian with the National Pork Producers Council. Uh, I oversee pre-harvest swine health issues for the council to include activities related to foreign swine disease prevention and preparedness, uh, otherwise welfare, biotech, including gene editing, uh, are a couple other topics that occupy a lot of my time. Yeah, so a boring gig, right? You haven't had anything going on the last year or two with those topics. And nothing. <laughs> Well, let's let's focus in on maybe just one of them. You get a, a wide scope there with gene editing, foreign animal disease, but let's let's look at the foreign disease situation. African swine fever is something we've been talking about in the United States for years now. Where are we at with a, an external situation update? What should producers be aware of for ASF status outside the U.S. that's most pertinent to us? Yeah, you bet. Um, I'll probably share some information from the World Organization for Animal Health uh, to kick us off here. Uh, so a couple statistics, so stick with me. Uh, but since January of 2022, uh, they record 62 countries and territories having reported uh, a detection of African swine fever. 11 of those 62 countries have reported ASF for the first time, and another 11 of those 62 countries have reported that it has spread to new areas. And so I think that that, you know, gets us a good starting point for kind of the global situation of African swine fever. As far as a number of animals impacted since 2022, um, 1,757,000 head reported to the World Organization for Animal Health. So I think we could all agree that this is probably, if anything, an underrepresentation of the actual numbers, uh, recognizing that there are some countries that aren't reporting to WOA, um, but those numbers themselves are, are pretty Im impressive as far as um, the, the number of areas worldwide that are that are dealing with this virus. And so for many of these countries, as far as lessons learned, I think we can appreciate the importance of surveillance, uh, traceability, how they're managing their wild boar or feral swine populations uh, in, 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 our, in our case, and how much of an impact those areas have on their success at managing or responding to an outbreak. That, of course, is impacting a lot of the work that we are doing here domestically, which we'll talk about a little later. But closer to home, uh, for those who maybe just need a reminder or refresher, uh, on July 28th of 2021, the island of Hispaniola detected African swine fever. Um, this was the first report of the virus in the Western Hemisphere in over four years. And so, of course, um, that got our attention in a very big way and has maintained our attention um, for the last three years. 
Well, and it's uh, just a couple hours away via plane flight, so that uh, that certainly should keep our attention. It's my understanding, Anna, that uh, the situation in Hispaniola, you know, the Dominican and Haiti, we don't expect that status to change in 2025, right? We, we expect those countries to be endemic for quite some time. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and I had the opportunity to, to take a, a trip to the Dominican Republic the end of July of this year and, and learned about some of their successes, their challenges, and, and USDA's plans moving forward. And so maybe I'll share a little bit about that with the audience. Um, and again, as a reminder, after the detection of ASF in the Dominican Republic, Secretary Vilsack allocated $500 million of CCC funds to prevention and preparedness efforts directed at African swine fever. And, and while some of the funds were allocated to, to domestic projects and programs, a lot of the money went to assist with the response in the Dominican Republic. So some of the successes uh, since USDA uh, traveled to to the DR in 2021 uh, would include advancements of diagnostic capabilities and capacity. A lot of time and effort and money went into the diagnostic lab there in the Dominican Republic. They also were able to support indemnity programs to aid in the removal of, of test positive herds. Um, they purchased six incinerators to manage interna international waste at sea and airports. Uh, they helped them develop a surveillance program as well as an agriculture-focused detector dog program, and um, also established regulations to manage the outbreak. And that last update there, I'll say, was something that caught me off guard. When the U.S. Uh, arrived to the DR, right, they started working through um, the, the, the tactical aspects of the response from surveillance to deep population, boots on the ground sort of response. But then they started learning and asking more questions about regulatory enforcement and found that there were some gaps in um, the, the, the regulation and the laws and the DR government's ability to respond or enact uh, certain aspects of, of, um, of disease management. And so that was something else that the U.S. helped the DR with, identify where some of those gaps or holes are um, in current regulation to allow them uh, more leverage or, or, or teeth um, in, in their ability to respond to people who, um, who maybe weren't following the rules um, and making it more difficult to adequately control the outbreak. So those were some of these successes. Um, with success came challenge, of course, and, and to your point there a couple of minutes ago, you know, considering that this is an endemic situation, uh, that, that wasn't the, the, the thought process or the plan or the goal, certainly, when the U.S. first made their appearance back in 2021. Uh, we wanted to eradicate the disease. Um, but now, considering that the disease is endemic, um, what, what led to that kind of real, realization? Uh, enforcement of regulation and the legal framework, as I had mentioned, was one thing that they, they continue to struggle with a little bit. Um, lack, lack of Dominican veterinarians available um, to assist in their response, so local veterinarians. Lack of resources, of course, including financial, and then lack of an incentive for much of the Dominican swine industry. I think here in the United States, we constantly refer to our export market and how a detection here in the States would, would um, shut down trade and, and um, how big of a deal that would be for us. And that's really used as an incentive for our producers to do what we can proactively to, to resume trade. That's not the case in DR. They don't have an export market. And so um, I think that that works to their disadvantage in, in some ways. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. 
With no export market, um, Anna, if you look at it from that perspective, I would presume that vaccination against ASF would not be a huge concern because they're not trying to demonstrate status, right? Be a problem here in the U.S., but not a problem for the DR. And as I understand it, they're genotype 2 ASF. Um, they don't have the, the recombinant hybrid that is in Asia right now. With the, with the use of black market vaccines that were genotype 1, they have created a, a wild type strain that doesn't, isn't protected against the genotype 2 vaccine. But has there been any discussion on taking that genotype 2 vaccine that was developed in Plum Island and using that in the DR? There has definitely been some discussion about the use of the vaccine. Again, I think um, acknowledging that the disease is endemic at this point, um, due in large part to their inability to control it through surveillance and depopulation and adequate movement controls, I think there is some interest in looking to the vaccine as another tool um, to try to manage uh, the, the disease. And so USDA continues to partner with the government and with the industry um, to try to um, make some progress in establishing, you know, whether or not that the industry or the country wants to utilize the vaccine. So um, still certainly part of the conversation, part of the discussion. And I do think that, you know, um, despite not having like that export market and whatnot, um, there is still going to be interest in trying to do everything they can manage the di the disease um, because pork is such a widely consumed protein on the island and is really something that in a lot of cases individual families rely on uh, a couple of pigs each year to to feed their own and so. While they don't have the incentives of export, they certainly have the incent incentives to maintain a, a, a healthy, available population of swine. And uh, we talked about the Dominican Republic a lot, but there's two countries on that island, for better or worse. Um, Haiti, I presume the situation update is still there's really no functional government there. There's no functional infrastructure to even begin to have the same discussions about um, the same uh, control and eradication discussions you've had with the Dominican. Is that fair? That's fair and correct, unfortunately. Yeah, not a lot of progress or communication has been had with Haiti. Well, Anna, that is... Uh, Concerning information, right? We have to be blunt that ASF being present so close to our country is very concerning, uh, but action is the antidote for anxiety, right? So I appreciate yourself and all the good folks at NPPC for advocating on behalf of the U.S. pork industry to try and create action to mitigate that threat. Um, it's been very helpful from a global perspective to get that update. And uh, if I remember right, Anna, we're going to have you come on for a part two of this episode and talk to us about what we're doing in the U.S., preparedness and prevention steps that were taken in the U.S. So uh, we'll wrap up here this first podcast now, uh, but uh, appreciate you coming back on next week. And for the audience, uh, look forward to next week for Anna to give us a discussion more focused on the U.S. and what we're doing here. Uh, appreciate that information, Anna. Thank you so much for coming on today. You bet. Thank you. All right. For Dr. Anna, Dr. Anna Forseth, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. This has been an episode of the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Please like and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. And uh, we appreciate you joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.